Hello everyone, this is Junema Isamilin, your OLC, and welcome to the G course, Understanding the Self. So for our learning outcomes, as learners, you are expected to first develop a Filipino identity. Second, identify different Filipino values and traits. Then lastly, reflect on your selfhood in relation to your national identity. Now we will be discussing the political self. So when we say political self, okay, this is that the conceptually discrete categories of inner and even the outer in reality constantly interact, shape, and inform each other. So political self has something to do with the discrete categories when it comes to our inner and outer, when it comes to our reality, with what is happening with our society in relation with our selves. And these are all interconnected in shaping our identity. Now to continue, political self suggests psychological and economic, excuse me, economic, political, and personal in reality constantly interact and interweave. Psychology may indeed provide a better account of business ex executives' dual moral lives than either law or economics. So when I say political self, it does not only focus on politics. Okay, maybe that's what uh, you're thinking right now, since we have there the term political. But when I say political self, it is more on the psychological aspect. Okay, rather than really the political aspect. Since we are pertaining with our identity, the self. So it's more psychological in nature. That is why as we go through this lesson, you will be encountering more on the identity of one's self in terms of his or her values, the traits, especially when it comes to our national characteristics or as Filipinos, what are our values, what are our characteristics, our traits. So that is the focus of the political self. Now, who is a Filipino? Now, Filipinos are often references to globally renowned personalities like Manny Pacquiao, Leia Salonga, and Michael Cinco, who have made Filipinos recognized around the world through their expertise. However, being a Filipino is far more than just being related to these notable figures. So all these figures or renowned, globally renowned personalities are all part of our identity since they actually symbolize who a Filipino is. So it's really important for our fellow men, for our fellow Filipinos to, you know, portray this kind of image of ours as Filipino. Now, what are the Filipino values and traits? So let's find out in order for us to understand better who a Filipino is. So the first one we have Filipino hospitality. Okay, so it's still connected the word Filipino, okay, with that of hospitality. So we have Filipino hospitality. So when you say Filipino hospitality, this has something to do with being welcoming, with being warm, Okay, that we are very approachable, we are very friendly, especially to foreign people. 
Okay, that is why we are well known for having this, what we call Filipino hospitality. Then we have also respect for elders. So Filipinos are known for being, uh, you know, respectful okay, to their elders, especially the young ones. Okay, so we usually uh, do this mano, okay, pagmamano, okay, to our elders, especially to our grandfathers and grandmothers or to anyone who is older okay, than us. So this is actually a sign of respect for our elders. And I think this uh, kind of uh, trait that we have or value that we have okay, has been adopted or this was influenced by the Chinese people. Then we have also another trait or value, which is close family ties. Now, the advantage of uh, having this kind of trait, close family ties, would be there's actually a unity within the family members. There's cooperation, and you can see that there's really this mutual understanding so as you can see in the image, right? So the, the, the family seems to be that big, but they are very happy and they are really helping one another when it comes to their household chores. Now the disadvantage of having this close family ties would be the children would become dependent to their parents. Unlike abroad that uh, when you reach 18, right? Especially in Western culture, when you reach 18, Okay, the children are already separated from their parents so that they can become independent. So I guess we can still do something about that when it comes to close family ties. Okay, so being with your family, but still you are independent. Then we have also another trait, cheerful personality. Now when I say cheerful personality, I guess this is something to do with being positive in whatever situation you are in, being happy with the simple things that you have, being satisfied, contented with what you have. You know, you know how to count your blessings rather than counting the things that you do not have at all. Okay, so that's cheerful personality. Then we have also another trait, self-sacrifice. So we are known for being uh, sacrificial or somebody who, who is willing to sacrifice for his or her family, especially for our family. We are willing to work for them. We are willing to give whatever we can. We are willing to help them in any way that we can just for us to really show them how much we love them. So that's self-sacrifice. And I think this is very evident when it comes to the parents right now who are already working abroad, right? They are willing to sacrifice for their family, for their kids, just to really provide for, for their kids, for their family. Okay, so they are willing to work abroad. So even though uh, they are experiencing homesickness, okay, still, Okay, they would really sacrifice that, okay, being with their family so that they can be able to provide okay, the means for the family to survive. Then we have another trait, which is bayanihan, which is really a very good trait of Filipinos. So the bayanihan that we can see in the image, okay, is a very cl classical example, right? However, right now, I guess in our modern time, you can still practice this bayanihan during typhoons or in any difficult situations we're in, Filipinos are in. So we can see that Filipinos are willing to help one another. They are willing to help each other. So if there are situations wherein we can be of help, then we are willing to help, isn't it? Okay, so that's already bayanihan. Then, of course, we have the bahala na attitude. Okay, so the bahala na attitude in, in some ways is uh, positive, right? Okay, since, uh, you know, 
don't worry about that. Okay, so you are worry free, which is positive in 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 a way. However, it also becomes negative if you will not be doing anything, since you would say bahala na, okay, bahala na attitude, okay, or come what may, okay, whatever happens, then okay, just let it be, okay. So uh, in in some situations, maybe we can uh, positively. Uh, apply or practice bahala na attitude but of course maybe we can try to do something with the negative okay, uh, aspect of this bahala na attitude then we have also the colonial mentality so most of the filipinos right now would rather choose to buy imported products right rather than really patronizing our own okay so you call it as colonial mentality so if they see that this is made in the philippines they would say oh this is local okay this is not a quality product this is not high quality product okay so i think we should try to do something with that since when you say this is made in the philippines it means that yes it's local since it's in the Philippines. Okay, it it was uh, manufactured in the Philippines. That's why it's called local. But when you go abroad and you buy their products there, still you call it local. Why? Because it was made in USA. Okay, it was made in whatever country okay, you are in. Okay, that's why you call it local. So same thing with us. Okay, so I guess uh, there's just a confusion with the term local. Okay, and uh, when you say imported, of course, it came from other country. That's why it's called imported. But of course, the, the people there in uh, other countries would also call our product as imported. Okay, since the product came from other country, which is Philippines. So I guess uh, there's really just a confusing definition or meaning as to the term local and imported. So please do patronize Filipino products because our products are also very good. Okay, our products are really of uh, good ingredients, good uh, materials. Okay, so if uh, you see products that are not of uh, high quality, so maybe you can check. Okay, anyway, uh, it's still up to the buyer. Okay, as to assess uh, in in assessing a certain product, but I guess it's also important that we should learn how to patronize our own then we have another manana habit so i guess this is quite similar with the bahalana attitude however when say bahalana come what may but when you say manana habit you will still do it okay but you will do it later so it's like you are postponing it, okay? So rather than doing it now, you would do it later, tomorrow, or maybe next, the next day, next week, next month. So the, the, the action is being delayed. It's being postponed rather than doing it now, as soon as possible, the earliest, the soon as possible, okay? So you call it as manana habit, okay? So I guess uh, we, can still do something with this because it's really negative, right? So rather than knowing your priority, so it's like you're setting it aside. Okay, so you should try to do something with this negative trait. Then we have also another trait, the Ningas Kugon. Okay, so for some of you, maybe you're familiar with this already, but for some, maybe this is new to you. But when I say ningas kugon, it means hanggang umpisa ka lang. Okay, it means okay, you, you know how to begin doing things, but you're not finishing them. Okay, you're not ending it. You're not producing a product. So you're not productive, you're not finishing anything. Okay, that's Ningas Kugon. You, you, you know how to begin, but you don't know how to end it. <laughs> you don't know how to finish it. Okay, so once you have already started, then you have a lot of things to do, or maybe you have thought of just postponing it for the meantime. Okay, then the work is left there, okay, hanging, then until such time that you already forgot that, hey, you have to finish this. Okay, so that's Ningas Kugon. 
Okay, so which is another negative trait, right? So I guess you can still try to do something with this ningas kugon, wherein if you have already started it, okay, you should know how to finish it so that you will have a product, you will become productive, you will accomplish something. Then we have another uh, value, which is pride. So when we say pride, not in a negative way, okay, uh, but in a positive manner. When we say pride, it means that anything, it could be something, someone that can really make you proud. Okay, that is why in the image you can see there the different uh, people, okay, personalities, okay, who are globally renowned, globally known for having such talent, for having this kind of, you know, identity in the global world. Okay, that's why we are very proud of them. Okay, since they are the image of the Filipinos. Okay, that is why they, we are very proud of these people who are well known, even in other countries, who are globally known for their talents, for their skills, for their intellect, and for the things that they are doing, okay, that are really influencing the world in a good manner. Another trait, we have crab mentality. So I guess this is another negative, right? So when I say crab mentality, so it means that you are willing to pull someone down. Okay, you're pulling someone down just for you to get there on top. Okay, so it's like you are willing to sacrifice someone else for your own benefit. So it's selfish, right? So that is why it's really negative. So this is very rampant in workplaces. In in offices, wherein there's an, uh, this position, there's hierarchy. In politics, okay, this is very rampant. Where else? In uh, in any place, wherein there's this what we call ranking. Okay, so uh, we really have to do something with this negative trait, which is not really good. Okay, so rather than pulling someone down, I guess what we can do is just be happy for this person, right? So if this person is becoming successful, getting there on top, then just be happy for this person. Maybe you can use the success of this person for you to be inspired, for you to be motivated, for you to push yourself, and in order for you also to become successful and to get there on top, right? rather than pulling this person down. Then we have another one, the Filipino time, as another trait of Filipinos. So Filipino time, okay, uh, this is uh, very familiar, right? I guess all of us <laughs> have already experienced practicing or maybe in some ways you were able to do this a Filipina time I myself I admit there are really times I, I I do this you know okay when when you know that you're late okay you would really tell lies okay which is not good right okay sometimes I'm really no no not sometimes okay many times that I'm guilty of this all right so Filipina time okay is uh happening when you're about to meet someone or when you're to you know to meet your group the group maybe or maybe you have already an appointment and you came in late okay you went there late for some reasons okay whatever reason you have and you would tell the person along the way yeah malapit na san ka na malapit na okay where are you i'm on the way I'm on the way, but you're still on your bed. <laughs> okay, so that's Filipino time. So I guess what we can do about this is for us to sleep early, sleep early so that we can wake up earlier, right? And prepare ourselves and get there on time. Be there on time. Meet this person on time. Okay, so I guess uh, that's one thing that we really have to do. Okay, so we have to avoid this Filipino time. 
Okay, so in conclusion, okay, about all those values and traits that we just discussed a while ago that would really cover the political self because these are all involved in our in our aspirations, our dreams as Filipinos, our our uh, our uh, what do you call this? Our stand, you know, our stand, our image as Filipinos, what we believe in, the principles that uh, we have as Filipinos, okay, our dignity. So all those, okay, all these values and traits are all involved. That is why I made mention that uh, this is uh, a negative trait that we have. This is a positive trait. This is our advantage, though there's this disadvantage. Okay, so it says here as a part okay, it's of our conclusion and to just really sum up everything. So learning Filipino values and traits make up our national identity, which is true, okay? Because this is our image, okay? All the traits and values th that we have could actually cover the image that we have as Filipinos or our Filipino identity. Now, what we can do is let us retain the good and change the bad ones. Retain the good, practice them, but the bad ones, the negative ones, we should try to change them into the positive values and traits so that we can become a better Filipino and we can try to magnify this better Filipino identity. All right, so that ends our discussion on the political self, okay, in terms of our values and traits that would really cover okay, who we are as Filipinos. So I do hope you learn many things from this lesson.